the Atlanta Falcons. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the NFL on Fox. Kenny Albert, along with Bill Moss, two teams with playoff hopes start the second half of their seasons in Green Bay here today and build the Packers with a record of six and two, but they have a tough week ahead of them. Two games in the next five days. Yeah, that's right. You know, they play on Thursday up in Detroit on Thanksgiving, and so this week, they actually had to prepare for two teams. And hey, football players, Kenny, I got to tell you, aren't real smart guys. So you don't want to overload their brain with a lot of information. So you won't see any trick plays. You won't see any tricky formations. What you will see is the essence of Packer football. That's running the football with Amon Green. That's what it's been for them this year. Lean heavily on him. He's powerful. He's quick. He breaks tackles. He's really turned this offense around. And that offensive line individually not that great but collectively this is a time of the year you want to lean on these guys and Bill on the other side the Atlanta Falcons get quarterback Chris Chandler back after missing last week's game with bruised ribs you talked about the Packers offensive line the Falcons offensive line must keep Chris Chandler healthy they've allowed more sacks per pass play than any other team yeah you know every time you think of Chris Chandler you think this guy has more injuries than evil Knievel today they have to find a way to protect him heck you can't think about coming into the Green Bay Lambeau Field where the Packers are averaging 29 points at home this year and plan on scoring 30 points by running the football they have to run the football but they've got to throw the ball deep downfield and to do that they've got to protect Chandler he's their best chance to win and for the Falcons, their first trip to Green Bay since 1995. It's football season. It's also hunting season. And some folks here in Green Bay have combined their two passions. You're watching the NFL on Fox. It's time for the UPS leaderboard. Here are the leaders through week nine. UPS delivers a chance to win a trip to the Fox football pregame set by logging on to FoxSports.com. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Back at Lambeau Field, the biggest cheers, as always, are for Green Bay quarterback, Brett Favre and nobody knows it more than Falcons middle linebacker Keith Brooking. He's, he's a competitor you know, and I, I respect that about him more than anything. He's you, you watch him out there he's a fiery guy you know I want him on my side any day so um, that, the way the way you go against a guy like that is, is try to match, you know, match his competitiveness and, and get in his face. And uh, you know you, you don't want to tell him you're going to be there all day because I think that'll motivate him more than anything. And Bill Brooking and most of his teammates have never before been to Lambeau Field. Well, that's one of the things Kenny, that they talked about was coming here and just the essence of being here, the nostalgic feeling. They said they want to come here and take a look around, but on the other side of that, this is a defense that's given up a ton of yards. But collectively, that you look at them on film, they play good. They played great down in New Orleans, and they said they have to match that same kind of intensity and effort they had in New Orleans if they want to stop Brett Favre in the pack today. And the Packers have won the toss. Jay Feely with the opening kickoff. Allen Rawson from the 12-yard line for the Packers. Across the 30, finally taken down at the 34-yard line by Chris Hudson. Brett Favre extending his NFL record, his 150th consecutive start at quarterback for the Packers. Packers offense ranked fourth in the NFL. Barry Stokes starts again for Chad Clifton, who is active today. Schrader and Freeman, the wideouts, Green and Henderson in the backfield. And the tight end is Bubba Franks. First and ten for the Packers from the 35. Amon Green, and he is forced back on the first down carry by Andre Crockett. Falcons ranked 29th defensively. Smith, Drenette, Hall, and Kearney up front. Draft with Brooking and Crockett, the linebackers. Ambrose and Buchanan, the veteran corners, Bradford and McBurrows are the Falcons' safeties. And Gerald McBurrows remains down. 
Yeah, that, that's that's going to hurt the Packers if he can't play. That's that's their strong safety, Kenny. That's that's the guy they like to bring up in the box to help control the run of the Packers and and any other team they play. And remember, they had Marty Carter there, and they lost Marty Carter. They cut Marty Carter. Here comes 22 McBarrows. He comes up there and hits him on Green, and then he gets tagged as well. See, see the bend over right there. The best teacher in the house is set up with the retirement chair. The trailer is set and remote control. So McBorrows, the former St. Louis Ram, as you mentioned, became the starter in mid-October when the Falcons released Marty Carter. Now they're going to bring in, uh, they only have one other backup there. That's John Dale Carty, number 35. Played a little bit last week due to some injuries. So a big blow for the Falcons defense on uh, the first play from scrimmage as McBurrows will be helped off there is John Dale Carty what, what, what's what's this you usually do that when you're kicking the last second field goal everybody kind of locks up together but Don Blackman the defense coordinator right here wants to make sure that John Dale Carty is ready to go. So Cardi replaces McBorrows. No gain on the first down carry by Amon Green. So the Packers facing second and ten as McBorrows is helped off. <laughs> Two tight end set. David Martin joins Bubba Franks. On second down, Favre's pass is picked off. Intercepted by Ashley Ambrose, his first pick of the season. Well, Brett Favre, Brett Favre started a little sluggish last week. You know, when he, when he starts that game, sometimes it takes Brett a little bit to get going. No pressure in his face. This is a little slant pattern, and Billy Schrader didn't adjust to it. Schrader takes the back door. See, he sees the safety coming over the top is what he saw. So Schrader stopped his route and went around the corner. 29th career interception for Ambrose. Falcons start in Packers territory on the 44-yard line. Chandler complete to Maurice Smith out of the backfield down to the 37. A gain of seven. Leroy Butler made the tackle. Falcons offense ranked 22nd. Chandler missed last week's game. Whitfield with Hallen, McClure, Claridge, and Salam up front. Martin and Mathis, the wideout. Smith, of course, replacing the injured Jamal Anderson along with the fullback Bob Christian and Algie Crumpler, the rookie out of North Carolina, and a tight end for the injured Reggie Kelly. Second down and three. From the Packers, 37. Here's Smith, and he is wrapped up by Nate Wayne. Gain of just one on the play. Packers defensively ranked second in the NFL. Jim Flanagan starting for the injured Gilbert Brown, who is inactive today. The linebackers, Wayne with Harris, playing with a cast on his broken thumb, and Niall Diggs. Terrific secondary. Williams and McKenzie on the corners. Sharper went to the Pro Bowl last year. And Butler, the leader of the Green Bay defense. Third down and two. Chandler rolling right on third down. Can't find anyone. Throws it away. He was under pressure from Vonnie Holiday. They bring it on the field goal unit, but you know, this could be, look what happened. On this interception, Schrader is gonna run a quick slant, but he sees Bradford jumping the inside, so he comes back around, and then Ashley Ambrose is in position there. Schrader just freelanced on that. He's supposed to run the slant. Brett, it's a timing pattern. Brett was throwing it on the time. Schrader just freelanced when he saw the safety in there. Press Moore punting from midfield. He's only had six punts returned all season. Oh, it's down at the one-yard line. Terrific placement. 
35-yard punt. Derek Vaughn got downfield, pinning the Packers deep in their own territory. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 36. Back in Green Bay, Falcons defense ranked 29th. They've allowed the most first downs as well. Packers start from their own one-yard line. Two tight ends set. The handoff to Amon Green up the middle for a gain of one, perhaps a yard and a half. Amon Green leads the NFL in total yards from scrimmage. Well, you know one thing, that he's been getting a lot more balls thrown to him on the check down because Brett has said he feels a lot com more comfortable. If, it, if it's third and eighth, he doesn't look necessarily look for the 10-yard pass. He'll rather throw the check down when it's safe to Amon Green because he's always been picking up the extra yards to get the first down. He can break tackles. He leaves the Packers in total number of receptions as well as rushing. Great out to the seven-yard line brought down by Mark Simino. Well, you may, you mentioned Mark Simino in there making a the play, and, and he's not one of the starters. He, you're going to see that they've got Stewart, Matt Stewart over here. they got Simino in here as well. They've got a bunch of guys in here. They've changed their look a little bit up front on defense. They're trying to create a wrinkle here for Green Bay and confuse them. Simino, of course, made the tackle there. Andre Crockett is out of the lineup. As is Chris Draft. Draft is now back in. Three wide receivers set, third down and four. And Favre's pass is broken up beautifully by Ray Buchanan, intended for Bill Schrader. Last week, Last week, Brett made that throw to Billy Schrader, and watch, watch the coverage by Buchanan. Gets a little jam there, then rides his hip pocket, and just as the ball's thrown, gets that arm on the ball. That's perfect cornerback play right there. So Favre 0 for his first two on the Packers' first two possessions. Josh Bidwell punting from his own end zone to Darian Gordon, who had a Huge game last week against Dallas. Gordon with the return to the Packers 46. So for the second time, the Falcons will start in Green Bay territory. What you saw of the Green Bay Packers getting stuff, they went two tight ends. Atlanta went four linebackers, four defensive linemen, a new 4-4 look. Down there against the two tight end of the Packers look, and that, that just stifled them up front. And now the Falcons start in Packers territory for the second time. On the Green Bay 46. Chandler dumps it off to Smith. Escapes a couple of tackles. Maurice Smith inside the 30. Down to the 28-yard line. Finally brought down by... Tyrone Williams after a gain of 18. Well, you, this is the second uh, screenplay you've seen from Atlanta. They set it up. They're looking this way. Then they get the ball out the back door. And that, that's just power of Maurice Smith. He just, he just goes right through Jim Flanagan. Good job of just grabbing the ball one-handed. So Maurice Smith has done an outstanding job of becoming the feature back. And here's a guy who's just expected to be a backup. Didn't know really what if he was even going to make the team when he came to camp. Making his sixth start. Chandler with time. And the pass broke it up on the far sideline by Mike McKenzie as we check in with James Brown in Los Angeles. All right, Kenny. Bad start for the 49ers after a fumble and recovery by Carolina. Chris Winkie, who was out with the spring shoulder last week, hooks up with Richard Henley. 14-yard TD play, 7-0. Carolina over San Francisco. Back to Kenny and Bill. So an early lead for the Panthers over the 6-2 49ers who beat the Falcons twice, Bill, in overtime. Two plays, and the Falcons would be 6-2 and two coming into this game, and a lot different feeling about where they are and who they are as a team. Three wide receivers set on second and 10. The handoff to Bob Christian, the fullback, and Christian picks up the first down all the way down to the 16-yard line, a gain of 12. John Theory 
finally brought him down. You know, we mentioned the Green Bay Packers were without the grave digger, Big Gilbert Brown, and also the middle linebacker, Bernardo Harris. He's playing with a cast on his hands. So there, here's where Gilbert normally would be playing. Flanny's in there, and they get the seal there, and they get Clidius Hunt inside of Bob Hallen, and there's just lane, there's just big gaps. And normally those big gaps are eaten up along with everything else by Gilbert Brown. Although he did lose about 70 pounds. That's like taking a brick out of this building. Yes. They take many bricks out during the construction. Maurice Smith, a three-yard pickup down to the 13-yard line. Jim Flanagan made the stop. You know, Ken, you, you talk about Maurice Smith, and really no one even knows who this guy is. Everyone, you think about the Atlanta Falcons, you think about Jamal Anderson. Well, Jamal, he was, he was an undrafted rookie last year. So, you know, when you're an undrafted rookie, you don't play much. You really don't know what your purpose is on the team. You come in behind Jamal Anderson to camp. You're just hoping for a roster spot on the team. Jamal Anderson goes down, and this guy has performed so admirably being at every down back. Sandler on second and seven to Christian. Fights his way down to the 13-yard line. Brought down by Bernardo Harris, a gain of three. You know, they're passing the ball. They're not taking their shots downfield. They're giving Green Bay just a little dose of what they do. And if you look at the numbers, 11.2 yards per catch on passes that are that are behind the line of scrimmage, the screen passes, the flare passes, that's the best in the NFL. And they're giving Green Bay a little dose of what Green Bay normally does to teams. Now third down and two from the Packers, eight. Chandler looking end zone intended for Tony Martin again Mike McKenzie yeah, I can tell you I, I didn't get a chance to see Mike McKenzie much last year but I watched film on him this year and this is one of the best cornerbacks in the league watch him play Tony Martin right there never touched him got a little bit of a bump on him coming off the line but when that ball was in the air never made contact with him just played the ball you're not going to see too much separation with any receiver on Mike McKenzie. Second pass he broke up during that drive. And out Jay Philly to attempt a 26 yard field goal. And Philly, the rookie out of Michigan, gives the Falcons a 3 0 lead. Falcons held to three and not seven, thanks in large part to McKenzie. We mentioned uh, the Packers' middle of that defense. Watch Bernardo Harris's right hand with a catch. He never wraps up on Bob Christian. He's protecting that. See, he never squeezes with that right hand. He's protecting that thing. And you're not going to be able to face Bob Christian and Maury Smith if you can't wrap up. Suffered the broken thumb last week against Chicago. Allen Rossum from the four. And Rossum is brought down shy of the 20 yard line. Only a 15-yard return. Wide receiver Brian Finneran made the stop on special teams. Well, coming up next, the second part of our Fox NFL doubleheader. Brian Erlacher and the dominating Bears defense take on Warren Sapp and the Bucks. Some of you will see the hot Redskins who have won three straight as they take on the Broncos or the Lions clash with the Cardinals. A full day of NFL action continues next on Fox. Penalty flag during the kickoff, so they will do it again. Dan Reeves a little bit agitated. Reeves in his 21st season, Bill, as a head coach. It's only the second time that he has coached here in Lambeau. Came here with the Giants in 1995. Of course, he played here, too. Talk about that ice bowl he played in. Back in 67. You know, that was a pretty good kickoff, too. <laughs> Despite the offside, it would have been a perfect one if they weren't offside because they've had Allen Rossum pinned to the sidelines. And it's, it's one of the harder things to do when you're a kicker to position kick. You like to get a kicker that can do that, but it's difficult to do. You like to get the ball outside the numbers to the sideline because then you, your, your cover unit has an area to go to. And the returner only has one way to go to. That's out from that corner. 
This time Feely kicking off from the 25 taken at the 16 by Rawson and he brings it out 18 yards to the 34 before he was tackled by Sean Jefferson. So good field position for the Packers who are tied for the NFC Central lead with the Chicago Bears following their victory at Soldier Field last week. Buccaneers two games back. Vikings will play the Giants tomorrow night. And the Lions still looking for their first victory. Three wide receivers on first and ten from the 34. Five looking for his first completion. He's sacked by Patrick Kearney, lost the football, and the Falcons have recovered. Kearney the sack, Shane Drenette the recovery. Patrick Kearney just turns the corner. He's working on Tauscher right here. And watch him engage, and then he just pulls himself through and around Tauscher. The pocket gets closed inside, and Tauscher's saying, Kearney was saying that against Tauscher, Brett Favre gives so much ground and throws off his back feet, it actually gives him more room to turn the corner on Tauscher. Ninth sack of the year for Patrick Kearney. He has a sack now, Bill, in five consecutive games. Talked to him last night. He said, if I can sack Brett Favre, that will be one big prize, like a big feather in your cap. He got one. So the Packers start from the Packers 26. The pitch to Maureen Smith gains just one. Niall Diggs made the tackle, setting up second and nine. Brett never saw this coming because of the angle that Kearney took around him. He really pinned that throwing arm of his into his body, then slammed him to the ground. Only the 11th time in nine games Favre has been sacked this year. He had a little bit of time. The coverage was pretty good downfield. And Brett, Brett was sitting in the pocket. He did he thought he had enough time in front of him. He never saw Kearney on the backside. Second and nine from the 25. Chandler, pump fake. Throws. It's caught by the tight end Algie Crumpler. Gain of four yards down to the 21, setting up third and five for the Falcons. Well, did you see that little double tight end that they pump faked one way, they came back the other way. They, they, we've seen a 4-4 defense out of them. We've seen some screen plays and some. It's obvious that Atlanta has had the time to game plan Green Bay and to pick apart little things that'll make it difficult for Green Bay to stop them. We talked about that short week they have this week and where this week the coaching staff is looking at film of not only Atlanta but Detroit as well. They didn't have the time to get into the intricacies like Atlanta has. Third down and five. Chandler looking for Tony Martin but he was out of bounds. Tyrone Williams on the coverage. So again. The Green Bay defense holds, and the Falcons will attempt a field goal. Well, this is pretty good throw, which is a little bit out of bounds. You know, the thing about it is, is look at the field position, Kenny. I mean, heck, Atlanta has had sensational field position. The problem is when you, you get that those kind of good breaks, the interceptions, the fumble recoveries, you've got to get six points off of them, and you can't settle for three. 39 yard attempt fairly hit from 26 earlier. So the Falcons lead is now six nothing. They have started all three of their drives in Green Bay territory. And they forced two Packers turnovers. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. By FedEx Shipping at FedEx.com. It's fast, it's easy, and it just got cheaper. By Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. And by Autotrader.com, the biggest, best-used car site on the planet. Back in Green Bay, Bill, we have not yet played nine minutes. Jay Feely kicking off for the fourth time. Fifth, if you count the penalty. And he sends this one through the end zone. No return opportunity for Alan Rossum. Well, back in 1991, Brett Favre began his NFL career backing up Chris Miller in Atlanta. Second round pick of the Falcons. Did not complete a pass 
as an Atlanta Falcon. He was 0 for 5 with two interceptions in this game against the Washington Redskins. He played in only two games as a rookie with Atlanta. Well, not many highlights on the field. Plenty off the field. Yes. Which, <laughs> that attributed to the trade. He'll be the first to tell you. He said Atlanta made a good decision at the time. On first down, Green looks to cut it back inside, wrapped up by Patrick Kearney after a gain of three. You see that play right there they run? That's that's the play that, that's been their favorite play this year, that, that zone stretch play. And when they run it to the right, well, everybody just steps to the right. Everybody steps to the right in unison. The whole line goes in unison to the right. Then Amon Green has the ability to, to start it out wide, but then he also has the ability to look back. And any place he sees an opening where a linebacker or a defensive tackle has fallen down, that's where he takes it. On second and eight, five, still looking for his first completion. Intended for Antonio Freeman. Five now 0 for 3. Well, Bill, we mentioned earlier, most of these Falcons have never played here at historic Lambeau Field, but do the Falcons have played better on the road this year than at home? Well, you know, their fan base has been dwindling at home a little bit. And, and also the fact that when they're on the road, I think a lot of them feel as though it's a business trip. They come, they're there, they have the meetings the night before the game, they stay in the hotel room, kind of a sense of a purpose. Here's Favre out of the shotgun. Third down and eight. Rolling right. Firing, looking for Freeman. And he makes the catch. It's Corey Bradford all the way down to the Falcons. 25, a gain of 51 yards. 16th catch of the season for Bradford. Ray Buchanan made a crucial mistake, and that was he looked back. He had turned around and looked back at the quarterback. Watch, watch Buchanan. He's going to drift, drift, drift. Now he stays and he looks. He's looking and he turns too late. And by the time he turns, Bradford is by him. Brett takes a shot after this play as well. Travis Hall slams him to the ground. So the Packers in Falcons territory. Green down to the 24 yard line. Keith Brooking made the stop after a gain of three. Planning in the center. He couldn't get, he couldn't get out there on, on, on a little sweep. They tried to run a little sweep to the outside, and he slipped and fell down. And when he fell down, he also took away the guard. Mike Wall fell on top of him. They couldn't get up on the linebackers. Dead of two on the play for Green. There's that 4 4 look again. Four linebackers. It's Green on second and eight. Inside the 20. To the 19, Kearney and Hall on the stop. You know, you know what's going to happen. They're going with a 4-4 look, so that means there's only three guys deep in coverage. So here's one, two, three, four linebackers because they have two tight ends. Now that means there's only three guys that are covering. Green Bay is going to see this and they're going to make an adjustment and they're going to use Bubba Franks and also David Martin and get them out on those linebackers singled up and they're going to take a shot with those guys. David Martin now split wide to the left. Favre on third and three swings it out to Green. And he is forced out of bounds about five yards behind the marker. Henri Crockett coming up to make the stop. Well, that's that's what Brett was talking about. It he likes normally he throws to Mon Green and he can make this happen. He looked downfield. He didn't see anything. Watch. He looks at these two receivers right down here, and they're covered. So he throws the check down. Brett's looking, looking. We got coverage, coverage. So he throws the check down. And normally, Amon Green, Brett says, he always picks up that first down. 39-yard attempt for Longwell. Who bounced back last week after missing four consecutive field goal attempts. So Longwell good from 39 as the Packers pull to within three. Back in Green Bay, Packers have turned the ball over twice, leading to three Falcons points. 
Atlanta with a 6-3 lead, 2.41 remaining first quarter. Six, six Falcon points. Two turnovers, two field goals, right? One field goal, one turnover, one field goal. Derek Vaughn. Fumble, fumble. Ball still loose. And the Falcons have it. So the Falcons nearly commit their first turnover. Derek Vaughn. See the ball he's had it on. You get up there in traffic and you know, you know you know what they tell you. Look at the ball swinging off his arm. When you're up there into the wedge, you, you can't take that ball off your hip until you're out of the wedge. When you're past the wedge, then you can, you can be a little bit more free, liberal with the ball. So for the first time, the Falcons start a drive in their own half of the field. They started their three previous drives in Packers territory. From the 21, Maurice Smith. Smith out to the 26-yard line for a gain of five. You know, one of the things that the Packers defensive front does, Kenny, is, is they, they shift to the tight end side, the strength of the tight end. So they put Vonnie Holiday over to one side and normally Gilbert Brown. So they set the front over here. Now you got the guys here. Then they reshift and they want to run it theory and Hunt right in here. They think they've got some good matchups there, and they did that time. So they're reshifting the front and trying to attack the weak side. Second and five, Mathis in motion. And Smith again looks to go up the middle. Up to the 28-yard line. Billy Lyon made the tackle, setting up third and three. Well, Jimmy Flanagan was in there, and he, he kind of stuffed the double team up, and then, then the end, Billy Lyon, it was able to close down inside. But Flanagan's going to have his hands full all day because he's going to be drawing that double team, and if they're going to want to pound the ball, they're going to want to pound the ball where Gilbert Brown was. So no matter who else is in there, they figure they have a pretty good matchup with the double team. Falcons 0 for 3 on third down. Three down linemen. There's Vonnie Holiday. <laughs> Quick drop and Chandler's pass is caught for a first down. Out at the 39 yard line by Tony Martin. You know, one of the things Chris Chandler was talking about, Kenny, is you saw how fast that ball got out of his hands was they got to throw the ball, and he has to be protected because of his injuries. He said, I've got to come into this game knowing. Look at him. He looks up the slant right away, dials it up, and that ball's out. He planted it at the third step, and that ball was out, which is near impossible to get to the quarterback and put a hit on the quarterback. And Chandler this season, the top-rated passer in the league on third down. Off the play fake, Chandler going oh. downfield, overthrows Terrence Mathis. Right, and that was set up beautifully. You know, rarely do you have any player on the field where you come free like Chris Chandler did. And they, they ran the bootleg, and they ran it so well with the play action. They sell the run. The offensive line sells the run. Look, they run block so hard that everybody comes down inside. Look, at these guys look like it's a run play. They're coming down, so every defender comes down. Then it's Chandler out the back door. He has no defender in front of him. He's thinking easy layup. He throws the ball. He got so excited, he overthrew Terrence Mathis. Chandler to the air on second and ten. Bob Christian, first down into Packers territory for a gain of 14 yards. 14 yards. You know, you talked about the, the, the swing passes and the, the passes to the flat. That time, Bob Christian, they, they came with some, some pressure up inside on the line, and there was no linebacker outside to pick up Bob Christian. He was out there, and no linebacker took him in the flat. So after 15 minutes from Lambeau, Falcons with a 6-3 lead. Fox NFL Sunday continues after these messages. Welcome back to Lambeau Field. 6-3 lead for the Falcons. Kenny Albert along with Bill Boss. Bill, have you ever been this warm in Green Bay in November? No, and I don't think anybody expected it out there. That's, that was a conversation down on the field with both teams. From the Packers, 48, Chandler 
looking for Mathis. Mike McKenzie on the coverage. Chris Chandler looking down at the grass, and they put new sod right down the middle of the field. Watch him slip on his plant foot. It's pretty slick out there. When he, uh, we got the first down mark in the way, but he, he, it rained a little bit before the game, and the field is slick. It's a, it's a kind of a Kentucky bluegrass line. It's not Bermuda grass. It has a lot of texture to it. It's a long, flat blade, and you see a lot of teams slipping out here. Three wide receivers. Second and ten from the 48. Tom Christian. Christian's had a big first half for the Falcons. Works his way down to the 37-yard line, a gain of 11. Another Falcons first down. Well, you, you saw the roll to the left. Watch, watch the roll. Chris Chandler never rolls to the left and throws the ball. They, 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 they really... He rolls out, and it's just a handoff oh, inside. But look at the job, the draw. Look at the job that the guys up front have done. Whitfield, Hallen, McClure, Travis Clarence, Ephraim Salam. I mean, they've got Green Bay off balance. They're hitting them with draws, just screens. They take their shots downfield. Then they hit a power run at them. Penalty markers on first down. Tom White, our referee. You hear the, the cadence being called. Ball starts. Number 70 offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. You hear the cadence being called by Chris Chandler. He, he's under center, and he is calling the cadence. Normally, uh, you come up to Green Bay with the crowd noise. thinking about a silent snap count because of the early scores by Atlanta I think they've softened the crowd a little bit now first and 15 Chandler to the near side intended for Brian Kozlowski broke it up by Darren Sharper Darren Sharper was on top of Kozlowski very quick he's got that burst and that break that he can get there that's that's the one thing about Darren Sharp. You know, he's, he's really become a big time safety in this league because he can do so much. I'm not so sure if he didn't get there just a tad bit early either. But the things Darren Sharper is capable of doing as a safety in this league, he can cover, he can hit you. He's a fantastic tackler. You can see the numbers, and he's got a long range. Went to the Pro Bowl last year. What a catch. Kozlowski pulls it down inside the 15-yard line, a gain of 27 yards. We'll take a look here. They're in man coverage. That's Niall Diggs, and that's the tight end, Kozlowski. Niall Diggs is man-to-man -man on Kozlowski, and the ball is thrown up and over. Look at Kozlowski go up and get it. That wasn't much of a vertical, but it was enough to get the catch. Only his sixth catch of the year caught the game-winning touchdown last week against the Cowboys. Three wide receivers set from the Packers, 15. Maurice Smith cutting to the outside, turns the corner. Penalty marker down. I was just about to comment on the blocks by the tight end, and then I saw that penalty flag come out. Algie Crumpler, number 83, who... In his first year, I, I think he's becoming a, a, a big-time tight end in this league. His athletic ability, I saw him block defensive linemen. Holding, holding. Number 85 offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. Remains first down. Watch to this side. Right over here. There's Kozlowski. Kozlowski was spread out, split outside. Crumpler actually makes the block. He positions the defensive end theory, then he gets up on Niall Diggs, the linebacker. Look at that block. But Kozlowski was split outside, and he came in and grabbed the corner. So following the penalty, first and 16 for the Falcons. Chandler over the middle to Christian. Still on his feet. Bob Christian is in for the touchdown. Kenny, that was an outstanding route run by Bob Christian. Bob Christian took the skinny seam post 
right to Niall Diggs. He took it right into his lap, then broke off it. And when he broke off Niall Diggs, the ball was right there by Chandler. Outstanding route by Christian and an outstanding throw by Chris Chandler. Christian's second touchdown pass reception from Chandler this season. 21 yard pass play. And Feely adds the point after. Here's Christian, and he's going to take it right here on Diggs. Watch the skinny post right down there. He plants it, comes inside, and the ball is on the money. 61 yards of offense for Bob Christian here in the first half. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light, are you ready for a cold one? By the Mexico Tourism Board, Mexico, closer than ever. And by Energizer, do you have the bunny inside? The Green Bay Packers, one of four unbeaten teams at home this season, 4-0. They won nine straight here at Lambeau, but trail the Falcons 13-3. As Feely gets set to kick off, Allen Rawson back deep. Rawson from the six. Out to the 22-yard line, a return of 16 yards. Brian Fitterin made the stop. Well, Bob Christian known as one of the best blockers in the National Football League. We asked him why. Having played halfback uh, in college and in high school, um, I, I, I kind of I know what the running back is seeing, and and I, I, I always get a good feel of what the play is trying to do, and and I just have a good feel for where, where the running back would like to run the ball, and uh, I think that helps me to to get myself in the right position to to make a block that's going to help them. Here's Amon Green after the 27-yard line, Dondell Carty made the tackle and Bill Dan Reeves says Bob Christian is the best blocker he has ever seen well pretty good runner he's turned into a pretty good receiver on a couple plays in this game and you know it's the mix that Atlanta has been throwing at this Green Bay defense and I really think it's the time that was put in to game plan it's shown up heavily on the offensive and defensive side of the ball second down and four far with time dumps it off to green first down and more out to the 40-yard line as we check in on the 49ers and the Panthers with KB. Hey, Kenny, after spotting Carolina 7-0 lead, J.F. Garcia with the feet that Chris Collinsworth says he has. Hooks up with J.J. Stokes, 14-yard strike, all tied at 7. Back to Kenny and Bill. All right, thanks, J.B. So, George Seifert coaching against his former club for the second time this season. Did Chris meet him when he was getting a pedicure? Who's that? Jeff Garcia. It's possible. I just don't understand how a guy could talk about another man's feet that passionately. And Garcia having another terrific year. Right in the middle, Tommy. Tommy. And many of the Falcons we spoke to, they've already faced Garcia twice this season. And they bring his name up when asked about Brett Favre. Well, they do because he can throw the ball just about anywhere. You know, the movement you get out of the pocket. That's the one thing the Packers have done a lot more of this year is go from the shotgun and then they roll the pocket. You're going to see a lot of sprint outs to the left and to the right. The blitz was coming. Favre with the hand off to Green and he gains just one. Well, the story early. Back in the first quarter, Green Bay Packer turnovers. Ashley Ambrose with the pick. And then Patrick Curdy with his ninth sack of the year, recovered by Shane Brunette. Packers trailing by 10. Facing third down and nine. They must get to midfield for a first down. Farms pass is broken up beautifully by Buchanan, intended for Schrader. Well, they, they flipped that side of the field. Last week, they did that against Chicago, and he, and he completed the ball to Schrader. And not many quarterbacks would make this stroke. Take a look at his play last week. 
You know, Brett said everyone thought his touchdown was the greatest throw, but it was this throw right here to Billy Strader. Take a look. There's no separation. Brett Favre makes that throw. Heck, that's not even open. He comes back, and Ray Buchanan saw the tape and was right there to break it up. Bidwell's punt. Gordon lets it go, and it is down at the three-yard line by Chris Aikens, a 54-yard punt by Bidwell. Think he's excited about it? Well, he's trying to change this field to help his team out. Well, this Thursday, start your Thanksgiving day with an NFL tradition beginning with America's number one pregame show. And these same Green Bay Packers head to Detroit as they take on the Lions. Falcons from their own five-yard line as Smith gains some breathing room for Atlanta. Up to the 10, John Theory brought him down. Well, there, that crowd came alive that time, Kenny. And watch what Chandler had to do. Chandler came up and tried to bark out some signals, but they had to go to the silent count. McClure's head goes down, and then it pops up. And when it pops up, that's when he snaps the ball. Take a look at the center's head, because this crowd is going to get loud down here in this end zone. Snap is on the center's head. Play action on second and four. And Chandler's pass incomplete intended for Bob Christian. Hunting season is underway. See all the orange jackets, Bill? There's a lot of them. You know, most of the times you come to Lambeau Field, you get that smell of the bratwurst going. This is the only time of year you come to Lambeau Field and it smells like that dough and heat scent that the Hunters put on their boots. Chandler back on third down and four. McKenzie on the coverage, Tony Martin, the intended receiver. And you go back to that, you go back to that jo Josh Bidwell punt, Kenny. Go back to that and that down at the three-yard line and the crowd noise getting involved and how that just swung the entire field position for the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> And they're going now. Now they got the crowd going. Let's take a look at the center. They normally don't go silent snap count. They just go by division. Chris Moore kicking out of the end zone. Fair catch called for by Alan Rawson. Chris Moore leads the league in fair catches induced. A 50-yard punt. Falcons leading 13-3. Talked about the difference in Brett Favre in this offense. Look at the years and the, how they used the shotgun. When Holmgren was here, they never used it. He was traditional West Coast offense, everything from under center. They experimented a little bit in 99, and now 40% of the passes that Brett throws are out of the shotgun. From the 39-yard line, off the play fake. Favre can't find it in one downfield, still on his feet. Now fires, and it's intercepted. Second interception thrown by five, and the third of the season for Ray Buchanan. Well, you know, when Brett scrambles, your receivers have to come back to the quarterback. Take a look. Great coverage downfield. Look at everybody's covered up, covered, covered, covered. There's no place to go. The pressure gets there, and Brett buys himself some more time. Now he forces that throw. You've got to come back. Person that came back. Got a different color shirt on. Take a look at Freddie saying, come back. 41st career pick for Buchanan. Most of the NFL over the last five seasons. Falcons from the 46. Chandler, but Terrence Mathis makes the catch 
in Packers territory. JB, turnovers elsewhere as well. Hey, Kenny, Philadelphia had been 25 of 25 in the red zone until this play here. Play action, but now picked off by Darren Woodson. The first career interception in the red zone since 98. One is still ahead, 7 0. Back to Kenny and Bill. All right, thanks, JB. Eagles with that half game lead over the Giants in the NFC East. Packers have turned the ball over three times today. Maurice Smith looks to get back to the original line of scrimmage, stopped by Niall Diggs. Buchanan with the second interception. Fellow cornerback Ashley Ambrose has the other, and the Falcons also forced a fumble on a sack. Three Packers turnovers. Uh, it's no secret, you know, in the NFL, if you can win the turnover war, the percentage of the games you win is going to go up greatly, especially on the road, as Atlanta is today. <laughs> Empty backfield on second and ten. This is Smith, the one in motion to the right. And Smith gains three yards on the play. Cleus Hunt. Made the stop. Kenny, you see what Atlanta is doing offensively, the rhythm that they're getting in where they'll run a power run play, then they'll run a flare to the outside. They'll take their shot downfield. Look at the last three plays that they've run. The shot downfield, the power run game, then the swing pass outside, which look at the numbers today. Working out well for them. Anytime you get eight yards on a play, we'll go back to the well on that baby. Third down and eight. Chandler to the outside. Caught by Sean Jefferson. Finally wrestled out of bounds at the 11 yard line by Leroy Butler after a gain of 22 yards. Oh, nothing fancy right here. Absolutely nothing fancy. Watch him work Tyrone Williams. Takes him in and then out. Watch him plant him. Gets him right there. His hips are turned too early. Tyrone Williams' hips were opened up too early, and they ran the out on it. And then what a throw by Chris Chandler. I mean, that's, the, that's the deep out you talk about in football and how difficult that is for a quarterback. So a big third down pass play. Setting up first and 10 from the Packers, 11. Corey Smith, penalty marker down. Smith gains four. Down to the Green Bay seven. We got an injury on the field as well. There's a flag down and there's a Packer down. It's Leroy Butler, the leader of the Green Bay defense. He came up in there and he stuck his head right into the, the ball carrier. Head might have been down on that. Holding number 71. It's a 10 yard penalty. Remains first down. Travis Claridge right here. He's going to get inside here. Then he gets at the, then he gets the tackle. And you see the contact Smith made with Butler who remains down will return in just a moment. Take a look at Roy Butler. He's going to lower his shoulder there. As is Maurice Smith. The collision and look on the face. And then the old kicking of the turf. Telltale sign. Roy's shoulder isn't feeling real well as he's still on the ground. Well, we spoke with Falcons head coach Dan Reeves yesterday. We asked him about the Packers. He said they have great leaders on both sides of the ball. Brett Favre, Leroy Butler. Oh, yeah. Been doing that for a long time, Kenny. Butler, the senior member of the Packers in his 12th season, he's got to three Pro Bowls. And he will be replaced by Chris Agents. 
you know, the one thing, the one thing that you talk about Leroy Butler and you talk about Darren Sharper, they, they blitz a lot. They bring those guys. They're, they're effective at the line of scrimmage. And today, Atlanta's been very well prepared for it. And you know why? Because they haven't had the time to put in the different wrinkles. They know they're either going to be coming here or they're going to be coming here. And they practice picking them up because when you're looking at two teams in one week, you don't have the time to say, well, that we did that last week, so we'll do something different. Chris Hankins replacing Leroy Butler. Following the penalty, first and 20 from the 21. Chandler steps up, can't find anyone. And is tackled at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Niall Diggs made the stop. Seemed as though they had a, a breakdown in their protection there. Chris Chandler got up and wasn't real happy with, with the things that had just transpired. Loss of about a half yard on the play, so Diggs credited with his first sack of the season. It's the first Packers sack today. We mentioned in the open, Falcons lead the league in sacks per pass play allowed by their offensive line. Yeah, they, they messed up. Look, they don't have anybody over here covering the tight end. They got three linebackers over on this side, and nobody was over there when Algie Crump was shifted. Packers had to burn a timeout. They just shifted the tight end over to this side and see that there's, there's your linebackers over here. There's no linebacker that came over. So they had to waste the time out. They didn't, they didn't adjust to the shift of Atlanta. You know, you know those guys, you can always tell it's a telltale sign. The good awareness by Bernardo Harris, because when they both start, when they all start looking at each other, they're back there, they look, you look at them, you look at me, we look at you, and then, and then, uh, Bernardo Harris is his timeout. When you start looking at each other and you don't have an answer, that's that's when you go to the big T. So the Packers for their first time out of the half. Martin comes in motion on second and 21. Oh, there it is. There it is. Chandler for Crumpler. Wrapped up by Butler's replacement, Chris Aiken. Well, that's what they're that's who they were trying to attack. You know, you have a new safety in there, and you have the athleticism of Al J. Crumpler, so you shift. Did you see the shifting they did? They bring motion over here so that this the corner's with them. Now it's the tight end against the safety one-on-one. -on -one. Al J. Crumpler had to stop. That ball was a little bit underthrown. Chandler should have put it more towards the pylon in the corner and made Crumpler go get it. Because Crumpler had to stop and wait on that. And the report on Butler, a sprained left shoulder. He's gone in for x-rays. Three wide receivers set. The handoff to Bob Christian. Christian fights his way down to the 13-yard line. There's so another. the Falcons send out the field goal yeah, unit. And again, you know, they're, they're, they're getting these field goals, Kenny, on these turnovers. And you know, you, you got to capitalize on them. They've had great field position this entire first half. Should have a lot more points. In fact, the drive in which the Falcons scored their only touchdown, they started back at their own 21. Philly, two for two. This a 32-yard attempt. Philly now three for three. As he extends the Falcons lead, it's now 16-3 Atlanta. Coming up next in the second part of our Fox doubleheader, Brian Erlacher and the dominating Bears defense take on Warren Sapp and the Buccaneers. Some of you will see the Redskins who bring their three-game winning streak into Denver, plus the Lions and the Cardinals. A full day of NFL action continues next on Fox. Short kickoff by Feely, and it bounces off the chest of K.D. Williams. 
And then it was recovered by William Henderson. And they're lucky. They are very lucky. Let this thing go. You let it go. You don't feel it. You always look around to see if your if your returner has has the ability, if he's in the area, to feel it. There's a reason you're in the wedge, and it, and it has absolutely nothing to do with catching the ball. Remember last week in Chicago, Jim Flanagan fielded one. Farm out of the shotgun on first down. Sets up the screen to Amon Green. Green out to the 39-yard line, a first down. And a gain of 15 yards. You don't know, you know why there was so much room on that screen? Watch, the linebackers have to play this thing deep because Billy Schrader comes in and runs a crossing route. See him running the crossing route? Look how deep the linebackers are. They have to respect the crossing route off of that. Boy, just, just by design alone, Billy Schrader on the crossing route behind the screen froze the, froze the linebackers. Didn't let him come up and fill. Bars pass on first down. Tennis for Schrader. Ashley Ambrose on the coverage. As, 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 much as, as, as much as Brett was on target last week in the second half, he doesn't seem to have that rhythm going today with his wide receivers. He's only one of eight today with his wide receivers. I don't know what you can credit that to, but I got to tell you that, that Ashley Ambrose and Ray Buchanan have had some pretty tight coverage. Bradford, the only Packers wide out with a catch today. None for Schrader, none for Freeman. The pitch to Amon Green. And Green is tackled at the 41-yard line by Henri Crockett after a gain of just two. You know, the one thing Brett Favre talked about when he talked about Atlanta Falcons, he says defensively, he goes, they're, they're a bunch of nobody. They're a bunch of no-names, but they play as hard as any good defense in the league. He says, I know they got some terrible ranking on their number, but he says, you watch these guys on film. They play hard nonstop. And then he, they're getting a full dose of that. The Packers offense is getting a full dose of that today. Three-man rush. Third and eight. Everybody out. Five. Down at the Falcons' three-yard line. I think that was a mistake, Kenny. You don't rush Brett Favre with three people. He'll kill you. You've been getting pressure around him all day long by getting in his face. He just sat there and sat there. And when you allow receivers to run around in the secondary with time, something bad is going to happen. A 56-yard pass play. So Bradford with two receptions, 107 yards today. Frank Winters in the game as a third tight end. A longtime starting center here in Green Bay. <laughs> and, you know, he, he's still the, the kingpin for that offensive line. They wanted to make the changing of the guards from, from Frank Winters to Mike Flanagan. And, and you know, it's been a... Frank still can play the game. Frank's very capable of playing. I mean, we even talked to Larry Bechtel, the offensive line coach, about him. He said, heck, he should be starting. I mean, he, he's that good of a player, but we need to make the transition. And we want to do it while Frank's here. He's the only Packers offensive lineman who's gone to the Pro Bowl, Bill, in the last 17 years. And, and he, he and Brett have been together for a long time. Still roommates on the road, still best of friends. It, it was hard, I think, for Brett at first adjusting to it but he knew in the long run it would be for the best interest of the team Frank runs the he runs the entire offensive line meeting he, he's the old hat he gets in there and he knows all the plays he knows all the switches he just knows how to play the game now he's out here tight end maybe they'll have a little tackle eligible here big numbers for Bradford today here's Green looks to cut it back inside and then it's forced back. They ran right over to Frank Winters. Winters had the block, too. What happened was, you used to see the, 
Well, he has the block. He's got Patrick Kearney blocked, walled off outside, and then he cut it back up his side. But the, the flow from Atlanta, from the backside, the pursuit down the line of scrimmage was outstanding. The pitch to Green was fumbled. Kenny, are you talking about jumping the snap count? It looked to me as if Travis Hall was in the backfield before the ball was ever snapped, and nobody threw a flag. Yeah, it must have been real close because Brett Favre was getting tackled. Popped away from Green, and then the right guard, Marco Rivera, recovered. Take a look at Shane Jarnett right here, 75, getting off the ball. He was in the backfield on top of Brett Favre before he ever got the snap. They, they, got, they got very lucky right there. Third and goal from the four. Favre, under pressure. He throws to Schrader. What a throw. Brett Favre. You want to talk about the mystique of Lambeau coming to Lambeau Field? The mystique of Lambeau is number four. Because he pulls some magic out of his hat ever since he's been here. Ryan Longwell. That's the point after. Packers pull to it in six. He throws his ball as he's getting dumped, Kenny. And watch how he recognizes it. Right here, now he recognizes it, now he throws it. You remember the old Raiders uh, throw with Kenny Stabler as he was getting tackled and he throws it in the end zone? Remember, remember that? Remember that old NFL film yep. highlight? That's what that looked like. That's going to be on one of those NFL films long when we're gone. He was getting tackled. He was going down and completed the pass. His jersey came out. See that? 18th touchdown pass of the season for Favre as he ties Joe Montana for sixth place on the all-time list. His 273rd career touchdown pass. Old, uh, old Travis Hall was laying on top of him, Kenny. And, you know, when, when you get to the quarterback and you do your job and you sack him and he just gets rid of the ball for a touchdown, that's a sick feeling. Derek Vaughn from the three. Vaughn looks to turn the corner. And it is forced out of bounds by Charles Lee. Sixth touchdown catch of the season for Bill Schrader. Schrader Bill returned last week, missed two games with an ankle injury. You know, it's completely different. It really is. And say what you want about Billy Schrader. You're always hearing that he needs to grow up. He needs to learn the game. But this Packers offense is different when, when he's in the game. Just, just for the mere fact of the speed that he brings. Falcons with a minute 46 to go in the half. Two timeouts. Sandler swings it out to Christian, who has the Falcons' only touchdown. Now to the... 33-yard line, a gain of 11, and Atlanta first down. And the Packers' defense has not adjusted to this yet. I mean, they're going with flow. Watch them go with flow, and nobody in the zone is taking the fullback out. And nobody is over, uh, over to the flat. You have to have your, your flare control. That's a flare pass outside. Every defense has to have a flare control in there. Green Bay, you know, a couple of those defenses, they, they're not even accounting for that. They need to make an adjustment. Empty backfield. Chandler fires complete. Sean Jefferson close to another. Falcons first down. Falcons in the hurry up. They have two timeouts. 
Jefferson did pick up the first. Chandler after the pump fake hits Terrence Mathis into Packers territory to the Green Bay 46. They're going to call a timeout right there. Terrence Mathis, this, this is two veterans adjusting to each other. This is a little inside slant play. And when once Terrence Mathis realizes that he's covered inside, Kenny, he stops and comes comes back out like a pivot route. And Chandler waits on him. These are two veteran guys in a two-minute situation, knowing if I go down in the middle, I'm covered, make an adjustment. Well, Bill Fox Tuesday, catch Kiefer Sutherland in our new episode of 24 this Tuesday at 9, 8 Central, right here on Fox. And if you missed the second hour of 24, you can catch it tonight and tomorrow night on FX. Check your local cable listings. Getting back to Mathis, Bill, if I asked you to name the top 20 receivers in NFL history, you probably would not name Terrence Mathis, but he's 19th all time been around a long time and he's played in offenses that really love to throw the ball. Played in a run and shoot under June Jones back in the mid 90s with the Falcons. First and 10 from the Packers 47. Chandler again pump fakes and then throws. Bobbled and then dropped by Tony Martin. See they had a timeout there so the defense was able to just and they came with the blitz. They bring it right up inside here. Watch Bob Christian pick it up. He steps up there and gets a piece of McBride, and that buys Chandler time. Chandler was a little antsy at first, but he likes he likes when Christian's in the backfield. He's a, he's a smart guy as far as pass protection goes. A lot is dumped on them. Three wide receivers, second and ten. Stands on his feet and then oh. throws another drop. This time, Kozlowski could not hold on. Quite a game going on between the safeties of Green Bay, showing blitz. They get up in here. Look at them. They're showing blitz. Now Chandler, he comes out of it. He puts a call on. He says, we're going to adjust to a quick slant. Now what, what happens is, they bail back out of it. All the routes were changed, and that gave the front four time to get there. Penalty markers, the play blown dead on third down and 10. start number 70 offense it's a five-yard penalty remains third down that's 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 Whitfield's second offside Whitfield's had trouble when he gets in a noisy stadium he he, he has trouble outside of tackle position he's good for a couple games when he gets into a noisy crowd fifth Falcons penalty Packers have not committed any uh, the Falcons just shoot themselves in the foot They've had a lot of opportunities to get touchdowns. They've had drop balls. And now some penalties on this two-minute drive. Third and 15. Christian diving out to the 40-yard line. Stopped about three yards shy of the marker. But another good effort by Christian. And the clock running. 12-yard pickup. Down to 30 seconds. They just kill the clock. They're going to let it run down. And then they're going to call timeout. Take their shot here. Fourth down and three coming up for yeah. the Falcons. I think Chandler got nicked on that play on that last play. It looked like his hand right throwing him. They call the timeout. Now, what are they going to do here, Ken? They're going to light up and punt the ball and try to pin them down inside with hardly any time left for a return. Or are they going to take a long field goal? Well, Bill, we'll find out. Coming up on the 
Visa halftime report. JB, Terry, Howie, and Chris will have all the scores and highlights from around the National Football League. And the Fox Sports ticker will bring you up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Visa halftime report. And here comes Feely, the field goal kicker. And this is going to be about a about a 57-yard field goal. He hit from 55 in Arizona earlier this season, which is tied for the longest field goal in the league this season. Chris Moore is the holder. He will spot it at the 48. So this will be a 58-yard attempt for the rookie Feely. And now oh, they gonna, will try and ice him. Well, they're going to put him on ice. And the truth of the matter is Green Bay wishes they were putting the whole Atlanta Falcons on ice. Because you're up here, they're playing in good weather. You know, and that's it for them. That's a home field advantage is the ice and the cold. See the trainers taking a look at Chandler's thumb. I think he hit a helmet when he threw his wrist. Take a look. His elbow hits the helmet, and then his hand gets caught underneath him. You know, he's got the bad ribs as is. Well, they looked to fake out the Packers. They sent out the field goal unit. Green Bay called timeout, and now the Falcons will go for it. This will be the final play of the half, barring a defensive penalty from the Packers 40. Chandler airing it out. And he put too much on it, throws it out of the end zone. But the Falcons, thanks to three Green Bay turnovers, have the lead at the half. You said Atlanta would need 30 points to win. Packers average 29 at home. They're more than halfway there. Now, you know, the big thing is, is that right from the get-go, Atlanta came out defensively with a plan. They shifted. They made adjustments. They really had the field position in their favor, Kenny. And offensively, things have worked out where they've been able to dink and dunk them and keep defense of Green Bay off balance. Let's check in down at field level with Drew Smith. Drew? Coach Reeves going into halftime with a lead, but he got to feel some points got away, especially in the first quarter. Well, we got a lot of turnovers and came away with just field goals. Our guys are playing hard, and uh, you know, we gave up a cheap touchdown there at the end. We just got to go out and play 30 more minutes hard. Happy with the defense. The defense doing a good job, yeah. All right, thanks, Coach. Kenny, back up to you. Thanks very much, Drew. You know, he talked about that defense, Kenny, and he's, I know he's not happy with that three man rush because you never give Brett Favre that much time. You've got to stay in his face. Falcons by six. The Visa Halftime Report is next. The Visa Halftime Report is brought to you by Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. Brett Favre has tied Joe Montana for sixth place on the all-time list with 273 career touchdowns, but it is Atlanta on top 16-10 in the first half. Or better yet, 59 more touchdown passes than I threw in my entire career. Ha, there you go. Favre back. Patrick Kearney inside. He knocks the ball loose. Shane Grenade recovers for Atlanta, leads to a field goal six to nothing. Now, Chandler back with Bruce ripped and off. Bob Christian goes inside on the linebacker. Linebacker went outside. He goes back inside. 21-yard touchdown. It's third. 13 to 3, Falcons. And then Toy Bradford, covered by Ashley Ambrose, the right corner, outleaps in 56 yard gain. And then this is the 271st touchdown pass of Brett Favre's career, tying, tying him with the great Joe Montana. Packers 10, Falcons 16 at the half. All right, let's go to the 49ers. Jeff Garcia. You heard our Chris Collinsworth talk about. He has pretty feet, Terry. All right, here's a guy with a pretty name. Chris Winky. Gotta change that name. Drops it off to Richard Hundley. 14-yard touchdown, 7 on in Carolina. And then here comes Garcia. Set up. One, two, three, four, five. Gun it. Pretty feet and all. He hits JJ Stokes. A little corner out turns into an old cut or an out. 14-yard score. And we have a 10 to 7. Panthers lead over the 49ers. The Orleans Saints have won the last four meetings in this series, but it's all knotted at 17 at the half. Let's go down to Dallas and see Emmett Smith coming back after missing two games with a sprained Lee ligament in his left knee. Bobby Taylor strips Emmett of the football, recovers 
for the Eagles. That would lead to this fabulous touchdown reception from Donovan McNabb of two yards. It's seven or nothing. I'm stumbling. I know. Ah, uh, too much Here's computer work. Play. And then Jeremiah Trotter, he steps in front of this Ryan Leaf pass, takes it back 50 yards, intercepts a return for a touchdown. 20 to nothing, Eagles in a route. I like that sprain lead, nigga, but I like well, that one. All right, Eric yeah, Lynn's interception was a just 29th takeaway of the year. That leads the NFL. Alex Van Pelt makes his fourth career start, but his first since 1997, all tied at 10. Jimmy Kimmel's upset pick builds over the Seahawks. And the Browns looking to sweep the Ravens on top by 13. That end of third, and Shannon Sharp in this one. Now the NFL's all-time career leader in career catches for a tight end, breaking his boss's record. That, of course, Ozzie Newsom. 666 in receptions. I'd be glad when he catches one more. And I'm sure he will as well. The Titans have won six straight against Cincinnati, nursing a three-point lead over Chris's Bengals right now. Atlanta and Green Bay. Falcons defense doing a great job here in the first half. First of all, they've taken away Amon Green, just 10 carries, 25 yards. But I really think the key to the game so far has been the fact that their uh, defensive backs playing man-to-man -man coverage in that secondary have been able to match up. So now they can focus on Amon Green. But I think you still have to give it to Amon Green here in the second half. He's been the guy this entire offense revolves around, should be in the second half as well. Well, one of the problems is when they have turnovers in Green Bay, and that's been one of the big knocks, and that has been a big knock for Brett Favre. And a lot of those turnovers have come in first halves of game. And then that puts them in a one-dimensional mode. That takes their their best running game player, Amon Green, out of the equation. You can concentrate on Brett Favre. Patrick Kearney out of the University of Virginia, nine sacks, one sack today. Big play. This guy went to the University of Virginia as a lacrosse player, <laughs> and they just asked him to come on as a football player. Number one player. Lacrosse I like player lacrosse. Anyway. One of the things I'm fa fascinated with Atlanta, though, by playing man to man or blitzing like and getting lacrosse. after Favre, they're taking away all the lanes, which right now Amon Green has not been able to break the line of scrimmage. Favre's been able to go deep, but that's really the key. And I don't think they'll change it up. This is going to strictly be. Brett Favre's second half. Chris and Howie doing a commercial break. Did he say he liked lacrosse? Something about a stick in a net and stupid. And we'll take you so, back to the so second half. Right. Atlanta I and Green Bay right after Martin this. Make a stupid Sorry, comment Jim, like well. that. <laughs> I thought it was a girls game. Visa is proud to celebrate the fans this season. Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. Sandwiches, candy bars, even old ice cream for him. <laughs> Finally, that Iliad for Hunters out in full force here in Green Bay. Falcons leading by six. Back at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Atlanta Falcons with the 16 10 halftime lead over the Packers as we welcome you back. Kenny Albert along with Bill Moss. Three Green Bay turnovers in that first half and a diverse Atlanta offense the fullback with 92 yards of offense. Well, that's been a big thing Kenny is, is what they're doing offensively to keep Green Bay off balance today. They can't hone in on any one particular thing. They can't hone in on stopping Maurice Smith. They can't hone in on rushing the passer Chris Chandler and they're getting into the mix by using Bob Christian out of the backfield 62 yards receiving today. Heck, he only came into the game with uh, about 90. So they're finding different ways to exploit Green Bay's defense and they're off balance and it's been an outstanding job by Dan Reeves. Dan Reeves will always throw a different wrinkle in every single week. And the Falcons line has done a terrific job protecting Chandler. He was sacked only once for a loss of just one yard. Derek Vaughn down to a knee. So the Falcons will begin the second half from their own 20 yard line with a six point lead. Take a look at those halftime numbers and what they've got accomplished. And, and the big thing has been time of possession for Falcons. They've been on the field a lot, the total yards, and the turnovers played a lot into it. I think that those turnovers played into the factor of Atlanta chewing up the clock and, and moving the football. Well, Roy Butler injured late in the first half remains out. Chris Akins in his place. 
Aikens coming up. Maurice Smith on first down. Gain of two yards, so it will be second down and eight. Leroy Butler being out, I, I think, doesn't play well, too, for the defense. Now, you always look at your defense, Kenny, and you start with the middle of your defense. And you think about your nose tackle or defensive tackles, your middle linebacker, and your safety. And if you look down the middle of Green Bay's defense, Gilbert Brown is out, Bernardo Harris has a cast on his hand, and Leroy Butler's injured and gone for the rest of the game. So there's a weakness in there, and Atlanta's going to keep pressing it. Chandler back on second and seven of the pass, patted down by Jim Flanagan. Boy, and he was he was fortunate to get his hands up because Algie Crumpler was wide open. And they're going to try that matchup on Algie Crumpler on Aikens. They're trying to attack Aikens with the tight end, Algie Crumpler. And you saw Flanagan get that big mid up there, knock it down. They're going to need combinations like that to help themselves out. Someone's going to have to do a little extra each play to help out that middle of the defense. Long count, third down and seven. Chandler to Mathis, wrapped up by Sharper, and he got it. Good second effort by Mathis. His third catch of the day. As the Falcons move the chains. Well, they get in that three receiver bunch grouping. And Chandler waits on him and waits on him. That's, that's the two veterans working together. He knows where Mathis is going to be and how he's going to respond to the different coverages he sees, Kenny. That time he took his guy up, he settled down, he knew his zone, and he turned right back in. And then the extra effort helped pick up the first down. From the 30, Chandler slips and then throws it away. In the vicinity of Algie Crumpler, so no intentional grounding. Hey, he slipped again, and we're talking about the middle of the field, and we're talking about that slick grass. Chandler may only have those half-inch spikes on, and most of the guys are playing with a 5'8 long spike. You have to have that long spike. See, is that Chandler's cleat right there? See all the mud that was up in it? Yeah, he's, he's got the shorter cleats on. This field, you need the longer cleats because it's slick. Sandler on second and ten with time. And the pass is caught for another first down by Mathis. Boy, he and Mathis have hooked up for some nice, nice receptions today. All of them have been over 10 yards on their on completions that they've had. And all of them, it's been very tight coverage. So Chandler, I'm talking about the feel of two veterans getting in a flow of where they're going to be and how, how the receiver is going to respond to different coverages. Chandler knows right where to put that ball because he can trust Terrence Mathis. You know, getting back to Chandler and playing here at Lambeau, it's his 14th NFL season. He has only played here once previously back in his rookie year, 1988. with the Indianapolis Colts. And that has been it. He's been here as a backup, but did not play here in Lambeau since his rookie season. Well, they didn't start the play clock there, Kenny. The officials, that's an official's timeout right there. They stopped the play. It doesn't go to either team. Big day for Christian. Mathis with four receptions. Christian shifting. The delayed handoff to Smith, penalty marker down. As Smith gains just one yard. Here's Tom White. We're gonna have a little encroachment here. The first Green Bay penalty of the day. Offsides, number 34 defense, lined up in the neutral zone. This is a five yard penalty, remains first down. They're playing are awful tight to the line of scrimmage. Mike McKenzie was up there in bump coverage, man coverage. And when you get up there tight, you've got to be responsible for knowing where that ball's at. 
Following the penalty first and five. And now he's looking in. See, he's looking inside now. Off the play fake to Smith. Chandler intended for the tight end, Algie Crumpler. Bill, the report on Leroy Butler, a broken left Second shoulder. Down. Well, look at the collision. Morris Smith and he have... Big blow for the Packers defense. Broken left shoulder for Butler. Especially as much as they use Butler and Sharper. Alternating them down inside, dropping them down around the line of scrimmage, blitzing both of them. You never know who's going to come when you face those two. Second and five. Here's Smith. Gains just one on the play. Leading is Hunt coming up to make the tackle along with Niall Diggs. You know, when you had Butler and you have Sharper, you can drop either one of them down. But when you only have Sharper, you're going to start getting tendencies. He comes down inside, and Akins is always going to be the one that's deep. Because Sharper and Butler are kind of the same type of players, although Sharper younger and more athletic now in his career. They can play their well around the line of scrimmage, and it really was a big, big part of what Green Bay did. I don't know if Akins can play down in there. It's going to start developing tendencies. There he goes, dropping out of the picture. Penalty marker on third and four as Chandler's pass is caught by Kozlowski. And the tight end works his way down to the 30-yard line. A 23-yard pass play from Chandler to Kozlowski. They have offsides again. It's going to be against Green Bay. They're going to decline that penalty. But again, you, you saw Aikens, Kenny. I mean, they're, they're going to they're going to start realizing that that the guy they're going to blitz is always going to be. The result short. of the play, first down. What? Watch how here, watch watch how Aikens drops all the way out of the picture. He's going to drop all the way. Watch him. He drops right out of the screen. They know he's the one that's always going to be deep in the middle of the field, and that Sharper's going to be the one lurking around underneath. So now you now you can pinpoint who your blitzer is going to be. Good effort by the Packers defense. And getting back to Butler, Bill, he has started 116 consecutive games. He has not missed a start since the 1994 season. And as you have emphasized throughout the telecast, Packers play another game in four days. And, and that's that's part of their problem today. And, you, you, and nobody can tell me different on it. I, you know, you may hear Coach coach say a question when coach tells you well no because we're do this and we prepare this and we prepare that now that's what he wants to think and he knows how tough a short week is every coach and every player in the NFL knows second down at 11 Chandler the Crumpler down to the 25 yard line a gain of six Bernardo Harris made the stop you know, and, and here you motion to empty backfield, so you know it's going to be a pass. You've got to get in your pass rush mode. Look at the time Chandler has. Hey, there's nobody around Chandler. Packers came into this into this game with the ability to rush the passer over 30 sacks. But now you get into the situation where Butler's gone. You have to be careful with your secondary. You can't blitz Butler. You can't blitz Sharper. You've got to play it safe. It takes away from the pass rush. The 11th play of the drive for the Falcons. Third down and five. Chandler over the middle. Another first down to the tight end, Brian Kozlowski. Now they're coming with the blitz by the linebackers. And they try to blitz the linebackers. This is a linebacker, 27, Todd McBride. That's Nate Wayne. You're going to say, no, Bill, that's not a linebacker. Yes, it is a linebacker because they're in nickel. Todd McBride is a corner and a safety, but he's a nickel backer when you get into three and four wide receiver sets. He comes inside as a linebacker. Off the fake to Smith. Chandler is picked off by Nate Wayne. Wayne's second interception this season. The first 
Falcons turnover. That hurts. Kenny, you drive the field, you get down inside the red zone. The Falcons are shooting themselves in the foot. They've had turnovers and only come away with field goals. They drive the field and now they turn it over in the red zone. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Well, Chandler's 37th attempt of the game was intercepted. Most attempts in a game thrown by Chandler this season. There's Amon Green, his average only two and a half yards per carry. Out to the 15-yard line, a gain of three. Keith Brooking made the tackle. Green Bay needs to get in, into a sink right now. They, they've allowed, they themselves have allowed Green Bay to hang around. Atlanta. They've allowed Atlanta to stay in the game, and Green Bay's allowed them to do that. They, now they've got to get doing what they do best, get into their own rhythm and keep Atlanta's defense off balance. Final two markers as far as looking for Antonio Freeman. You heard the hard count come across your television set. And that's, you know, that's, that's one thing Atlanta does real well. Atlanta works the hard count on you. Chris Chandler will work it. And so this week in practice, they wanted to give them a little dose Off of their own stuff. Number Red 75, defense. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains second down. All right, just, just take a listen to, to Brett Favre. And if this doesn't draw you offsides, I don't know what will. Look for Look for well, and full change on it. Setting up second and three. Runs right up to Keith Brooking. Close to a first down. Watch Keith Brooking seep through all the garbage. Keith Brooking's right in the middle, right here. Watch it. He comes over the tops of Stokes and then has to come back in underneath to wrap up Amon Green. You talk, you know, you talk about no-name guys. You know, nobody knows who the Atlanta Falcons are. Their defense is ranked 30th. There's a lot that goes into that. They have a new young coordinator, and, and sometimes, you know, he's learning as well. These guys are all feeling hey. each other out. But I got to tell you, you they've got some playmakers on that side of the ball, and Keith Brooking leads them all. He'll go to a pro ball or two before his days are done. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of good middle linebackers in this league, but you talk about scrappiness and determination and ability. And Bro Brooking has all those things. He can cover. He can get down. He's always around the ball. He always he's got fumble recoveries he's got forced fumbles he's got interceptions he's got sacks and he's got 98 tackles he came into this game with third and inches and Amon Green picks up the first down and more finally cut down by Ronnie Bradford at the 42 yard line after a gain of 21 you know Brett Favre was talking about Amon Green and how sensational he is that he has the power to get up in the hole look at there's nothing there most backs in this league would say that's not a hole. Amon Green has explosiveness, he has power and strength through the hole, and he has speed to break it any time. Brett Favre compared him to Bo Jackson. Combination of power, quickness, speed. That was the longest run of the day by the Packers. Green takes this one out across the 45 for a gain of three. You know, and Brett, <laughs> Brett said, well, I never... I never played when Bo Jackson was playing. I watched him on TV, and I played with Bo Jackson. I remember playing when he played for Los Angeles. We played him a lot of times, and you know he was he was like that. He had those things. I don't know if Iman is as physical, but all the Packers swear by it. They say when he comes up into the line of scrimmage, he delivers a blow that's second to none. And he says sometimes they run up to the back of the offensive line and it just knocks him down. Far to Schrader. Ambrose fell down, gets back up the tackle but not before Schrader picks up another Packers first down a gain of 16 yards now you always see people slide around this field <laughs> in December it's because it's frozen but when it's nice out like it is today watch Ashley Ambrose he goes down right there you really have to keep your weight over your feet 
Uh, and it's tough to do sometimes when you extend yourself as, as much as the athletes do to try to get as most they can out of their bodies. But the grass down there, it's slick. The Packers on the move, trailing by six. Five out of the shotgun. On first down, he fires downfield. Intended for Antonio Freeman. Ray Buchanan on the coverage. See, what specialists don't know, specialists, I mean the specialty positions, your quarterbacks, your wide receivers, your running backs, what they don't know is, is that you have to wear the 5 8 inch spike up here. If, I, I, Ashley Ambrose, I'm sure, doesn't have 5 8 inch spikes on because he thinks that it makes him slow. You know, see, he's got the short spikes on, and Ed Buchanan does too. What you always do is you always look at the opposing team, the home team running back and quarterback. If they've got long spikes on, you better too. You've given away the secret. Dorsey Lemons. His first carry of the day, and he burst through for nine. The Georgia Tech product. Well, they're leaning now on their offensive line. They're mixing it up some. And here comes the lead play. William Henderson, they're going to go this way, but Darcy Levin decides to cut it back off the center, behind the center, because he saw the backside defenders down on the ground. Packers have driven 56 yards on this drive, doing it primarily with the run. There's Ramon Green, first out, down to the Falcons, 27. The run game picking up for Green Bay. Well, they're, they're leaning on the offense, but I want you to take a look at the hole, Kenny. Most backs, this isn't a hole, but to Amon Green, it is. Look, where do you run right here? Where do you go? Look, there's bodies everywhere all around you, and he finds daylight and creases in that. To me, he does have power, he does have speed, but his vision and ability to know where his crease is going to be, to me, that, that jumps out more than anything. Here's Green again, up the middle. Gains four, down to the 23. Remember, it was Mike Holmgren who traded Amon Green from Seattle to the Green Bay Packers prior to last season. You know, William Henderson, 33, he's right up there in front of Amon Green. He's going to be the lead blocker on this play. This is an ISO play to the linebacker. He gets on Brooking, and he pins Brooking. And off of that is where Amon Green goes. I, I think he runs better in the backfield with Henderson. Favre on second and six, in trouble, and he is taken down by Brady Smith. And that just took him out of field goal range. Sack number five for Smith as we check in with James Brown. Hey, Kenny, we know Garcia's favorite target has been Terrell Owens this season. J.J. Stokes came into this game with only one touchdown reception. He had one earlier. Here is the second one, a nine-yarder. It's now San Fran on top by one. Back to Kenny Albert and Bill Moss. You know, Steve Mariucci just, you know, stops hampering that offensive play calling and just open it up a little bit. Score some points. Hey, they'll be all right. Never a dull moment <laughs> in the Bay Area. <laughs> Five on third and long. Nice catch by Levins. And he gets the Packers back to field goal, field goal territory. Yeah. yeah, that was a heck of a job by Dorsey Levin staying with the play. And that was well off his fingertips, and he just he bought himself some time. Brady Smith never bit on the fake that was inside. He kept contained. He stayed where he was. They ran a little, looked like a fake running play inside there to Amon Green. But he's the one that pushed them back this far. Ryan Longwell hit from 39 yards out earlier. This is a 45-yard attempt. And Longwell's kick is good. He's two for two on the day. It's long, and it was well. Yes. You can hear the boom. Placed down by Doug Peterson. Packers within three. Back at Green Bay, Amon Green averaging over six yards per carry in the second half. And a big focus during the Packers drive, which led to a field goal. 
Falcons have led throughout. Packers turn the ball over three times in the first half. Two interceptions and a fumble. Falcons on the road. They've won two straight away from home. And they lead by three late third quarter. One thing the Packers have done differently in their running game is they're not trying for the perimeter anymore. They're hammering it up inside the tackle. That's a dog. And a smart play by Vaughn. That's a roll out of bounds, which will give the Falcons first and 10 at the 40. At their 40 yard line, first down and Packers, 10. They'll sign Time the out. kickoff specialist, James Tuthill, this week, but right. he is not active today. Yeah, well, he slips here. Watch. Watch his plant. See, his, his plant foot slipped as he was coming through that. That feels a little bit slick. He's a specialist, he has short cleats on. The Packers and the Lions on Thanksgiving Day, beginning with the pregame at 11.30 a.m. on Fox. My favorite day, Ken. Or none, not even close. How about the starting field position today for the Falcons? At their own 38-yard line. False start. Number 80. Offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains. First down. That's Tony Martin. You know that Packers Lions Thanksgiving Day game in Detroit used to be an annual affair from 1951 through 63. Detroit hosted Green Bay on every Thanksgiving. And it was mostly Detroit. I think the Packers only won four times on that stretch. First and 15 following the penalty. Middle of the field. Chandler goes back across. Hits Mathis at the 45, a gain of 10 yards. Tyrone Williams made the stop. Take it, you know, watch the play action here by Chandler. Watch the ball handling. He sticks the ball out, pulls it back in as he sets in his drop. And that really sucks the linebackers up into the play, and it opens up the field for you. Chandler's season high, 21 completions, season high, 38 attempts. Second and four. Maurice Smith has the first down into Packers territory. You know, I, I, I can't tell you how Maurice Smith. Uh, to me, that's just it's it's a great story about an opportunity. There was a young man who was undrafted last year and, and was forced to play. I mean, he got handed the hat. He said, Maurice, Jamal's gone for the season. It's in your lap. And now here's he's a guy that has to learn a game. He's, he's every time he does something, he's learning the, about the NFL. And for every down guy, I just can't tell you how good of a job I think he's doing. And 148 yards last week against the Cowboys. Jameis pass broken up, nearly picked off by Sharper. Well, that's the second time that Chris Chandler has rolled to the right and sat in the, set up outside the pocket and almost got picked off for the second time. Nate Wayne got him down in the red zone on the same type of play. A roll out to the right, setting up. He's not seeing the underneath back flow to that side. He sees his receivers he's rolling, but he's not seeing who's pursuing him underneath. Three wide receivers set for the Falcons. Second and ten. Bob Christian. Christian man, still on man. His feet. What a game. What a game Christian has had this afternoon. Christian's looking a little bit like Allstott. <laughs> I mean, that's he's looking, he's running like Allstott. Watch this. They run a counter play here, and they're gonna pull Kozlowski and the backside guard. Travis Clarence. That's who they pull. That's a counter OU is what they call it, actually. Even. The second tight end, Kozlowski, is, is the puller. 102 yards of total offense. First and 40 on the ground, another 62 on five receptions. Here's Smith, looks to turn the corner. You know, getting back to Smith in the situation, Bill, when he replaced the injured Jamal Anderson, Bob Christian told us yesterday a much different feeling than 
when Anderson suffered his season-ending injury back in 98? Well, I think for a couple reasons. One is that back when he got his first injury, it took the air out of the team. They really thought that their, their, their bell cow was gone, and oh my gosh, what are we going to do now? And they felt that way, and they believed it, and the season turned out that way. But this year, it's a team that was used to it. When it's gone, now they just move on, and that's what they've done. Three quarters of the books. Falcons lead by three. Kenny Albert, Bill Moss, back in Green Bay. Three-point lead for the Atlanta Falcons, 16-13. Over the Green Bay Packers as we start quarter number four. Second and seven Falcons from the Packers, 36. Terrence Mathis breaks one tackle, can't break the second. Tyrone Williams brings him down, setting up third down at about three and a half. Right, look at the stats through three quarters. It's been all Atlanta, everywhere in the books. 18 first downs. Look at the time of possession. The plays run. It's not up there. Was it 56 to 36? It's, just, it's, it's been a lot. And they're, they've really just dominated this game. And what has happened is, Kenny, they haven't adjusted. Green Bay still has not adjusted. One, Atlanta's throwing the ball all over the place. That's uncustomary. And then they're countering back with some screens and some draws and Bob Christian, things they haven't done. Third down and four. Chandler fumbles. Penalty marker down. Chandler's pass deflected and then picked off by Bernardo Harris. Yeah, a lot happened there, Bill. A fumble, yeah. a penalty flag, a deflection, and then an interception. Well, the penalty flag came down first. So this will be, an, if it is against Atlanta, this will be an interception for Green Bay. Illegal use of the hands to the face, number 71 on the offense. The penalty is declined to take the result of play. First down for Green Bay. Again, Atlanta with a big drive, Kenny. They cross the 50. They're shooting themselves in the foot. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 36. By Nike. By 1010-220. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. And by Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. Chris Chandler had a little problem with the snap. Never got control of the ball. And the tip ball by Thaddeus Hunt for the interception. But here's the penalty. Travis Clare is right to the Santana Dotson's face. So following the Falcons' second turnover of the second half, Favre going deep for Schrader and Ray Buchanan broke it up. He got the hand in. <laughs> you know, most most times, most times your your cornerback throw you know blocks the ball from in front this time you can and watch watch his hand he's going to knock it out of the backside of Billy Schrader Watch, he's going to play it from back here boom how about that talk about a little trickery you know normally you know your corner is always playing the ball in front they never want the the receiver the opportunity to get the hands on it Billy had his hands on it and Ray knocked it back the other way Freeman in motion, second and ten. Falls pass oh, is oh. broken up. Conrad Hamilton nearly picked it off. Uh, Brett's looking to the front side, and he tries to force this ball in here. And Conrad Hamilton almost had the pick, but I want you to watch the matchup up here. Look at this. He has that slant inside with nobody in the middle of the field. Never even saw it. The numbers on farm today. On third and ten, he dumps it off to Dorsey Levins. But Keith Brooking was right there. A couple of former... Georgia Tech stars, Keith Brooking tackling Dorsey Levins. You know, that was very close because Brookings had him wrapped up and then tried to slam him to the to the turf on the sideline. You know, the fans didn't like it. But what amazed me was none of the Packers really came to Dorsey Levins' rescue. 
And they let Brookings walk right into his sidelines and slam one of the players down. Yeah, it was on their sideline. Bidwell's punt rolls out of bounds at the 22 yard line. So the Falcons will take over following the 39 yard punt. I, I think this is the. Watch. Brookings, he slams him out of bounds, and not one Packer gets in his drill. I think these guys are a little bit flat. Well, Bill, the, pa the uh, Falcons' last two possessions a seven play drive and a 12 play drive. Both ended with interceptions. Chandler and the Falcons back to work from their own 22-yard line. No, that's going to be intentional grounding. You can't throw it at the screen. It was a screenplay. You can't throw it at his feet if you have people in front of you. Yeah, and the referee is explaining it to him right now. Tom White. See, they're going to try to run the screen up over in here. But what happens is, with the pressure, you can't throw it at his feet. You have to make a legitimate effort to throw it to the receiver if you're standing in the pocket. Now, if you're outside of the pocket, you can throw the ball away. But when you're in the tight end to tight end pocket in the middle of the field. Intentional grounding, number 12. This pass is more than 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Therefore, the ball will be placed there by rule. The intentional grounding is because he threw the ball into the ground. This carries loss of down. Second down. Now, because he was further than 10 yards, it's a 10-yard penalty, Kenley, Kenny. So when, when he goes further than 10 yards and throws it, now they spot the ball where he threw it from. That's what the penalty reads, an in intentional grounding. The eighth Falcons penalty. Setting up second and 22 from the 10. Chandler to Mathis, and he's drilled out at the 20-yard line as we check in with Jake Brown for an update on the Niners and the Panthers. Kenny Bill, Carolina is really playing some tenacious football. You know they've lost eight straight, but take a look at Wilson straight down the middle to Wesley Walls, his fifth touchdown reception of the season. It is now Carolina on top by five in the fourth. Back to Kenny and Bill. All right, JB, Panthers looking for their second win of the season. Terrence Mathis remains down as he was nailed by the combination of Nate Wayne and Tyrone Williams. Yeah, well, Williams was, Nate Wayne is right in the middle of the field. Watch him, there's Tyrone, and there's Nate Wayne. And he gets his head sandwiched in between the two of them. And he's feeling it. How about the camera work by our guys? Isn't that unbelievable. I mean, I don't have to say anything. I mean, y'all, you, you just look at the face on Terrence Mathis. That, that says it all. Let the pictures tell the story. Terrence Mathis, seven catches today, 70 yards. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. By Best Buy, for the latest technology, turn on the fun at Best Buy. By Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Dockers, look as good as you feel. Back at Lambeau Field, Terrence Mathis, seven catches today. It's getting loud now, Kenny. Yep. 10-2 by the Falcons training staff. Ryan Finneran checks in as the third wide receiver. Play clock winding down. Uh -uh. No, McBride, McBride's offside. He was coming on the blitz, and he, he made contact and encroachment well before. And some extracurricular activity. Flags and hats everywhere. The officials throwing their hats to signify additional penalties. Well, McBride was angry when they pulled him up off the top for jumping over top and on the quarterback. I mean, heck, Chandler's hurt. He's come into this game with the, the torn cartilage in his ribs, and McBride jumps over top and lands on him, and Ephraim Salam tries to pull him off. McBride gets up. 
shove somebody and then the altercation starts. You know, the referee said that they were always there this year they were going to try to get the instigator. They don't want offsetting penalties. You know, 15 yards on you, 15 yards on you, offsetting penalties. You got to get the instigator. And McBride was the first one to push back. And in many instances, it is only the player who retaliates yeah. who is caught. Well, you know, that's what they were trying to get away from last year because they wanted to get the guy that starts it. We have multiple fouls on the play. Offsides, number 27, Green Bay. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 31. That's a 15-yard penalty to be accepted. It's a first down. It's Chris Akins. Call for the personal foul. That's where it starts right there. He comes over. It's off sides, and he's kind of riding Chris Chandler like a wild Bronco and throws him down. And he's from Salam. You know, you got to protect your quarterback. He just pull, pulls him up. Learn from what happened with Kyle Turley. He just had it pulled him off and said, get off my quarterback. Get away from him. And it stopped right there until McBride pushed back. Right here, he comes in and pushed back. And then Aikens jumps in. So a huge sequence. It had been third and 12. Turns into a first and 10 from the 35. How about that leapfrog technique? Here's Smith on the handoff. And he's wrapped up by John Theory. No gain on the play. Another injury. Well, the report on Terrence Mathis, he had his bell rung. As you would imagine, his return. Look at, oh, look at, look at, look at Sherman. You, you see what happens on the sidelines? Mike Sherman and Aikens just went at it on the sidelines. And Sherman just threw him, get him out of here. He said he threw him off the field. Mike Sherman and, and Aikens, Chris Aikens, just got in a fight on the sidelines. Reminiscent of Kevin Green a couple of years back in Carolina. <laughs> that was with a position coach. That's not with the head coach. No. And that was Kevin Green. All-time sack leader for linebackers in the NFL. That's not Chris Akins. You, you know, you, you, you need... You, the, holy mackerel. St. Wayne is the injured Packer. That's Rob Davis, the long snapper, trying to calm down Chris Akins. Oh. That, 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 that's that's after they got into an altercation. They got into an altercation. Mike Sherman's headgear came flying off. And Sherman shoved Aikens. Yeah, you might as well do, you, you take that off and just go. Right here, it happens on the sidelines. Well, that, that's still after the fact. Yeah, that was after the fact. And it already occurred. Kyle Jew has replaced Akins. Number 21. You got to use Trumpler in the middle of the field. Penalty marker as Chandler hits Tony Martin for a Falcons first down. Uh, that may be on it. Tony Martin had a lot of separation there when he came out of the break. Martin saying it's against against Williams. And it's been obvious. Illegal they, contact. Number 37 defense. Penalty is declined. Take the result of the play to complete a pass. First down. Mike Sherman over there talking to Chris Akins. He's not done. He's not done. He, he goes. <laughs> Billy Schrader over there consoling him. Billy Schrader's been in that situation before. Remember when Mike. Mike Holmgren grabbed him and tossed him around a little bit on the sidelines. Right, on a Monday yeah. night game. So he's getting some good counseling from a first-hand guy. Chandler, what a catch. Over the middle to Tony Martin. 
Gain of 16 yards and a Falcons first down. As we check in with Drew Smith, Drew. And guys, a little bit of dissension in the ranks, and Chris Aiken is being told by Mike Sherman, hey, you can't do that in the NFL. If you're going to do that, you're not going back in the game. Back to you. Well, you know, you talk about that penalty and what he did. It just would have been an offsides. But with the 15 yards in the first down, it is given life to the Atlanta Falcons. Look where they're at right now. They continued that drive. The 15-yard penalty by Chris Aiken. Maurice Smith bottled up. Darren Sharper coming up to make the play. It had been a third and 12 when the offside penalty was called on McBride and then Aikens coming in, the 15-yard personal foul. Kept this drive alive, and now the Falcons are on the Packers 36. You know, one thing Sherman has done is brought discipline to this team. And he knows Butler's down, and Aikens was the guy to go in there, but he's not going to tolerate those kind of penalties, and that's what he's brought to this team. He said, yeah, you know what? I'll find somebody else to play the position. You're not going to have a penalty on the field and continue to play. It's going to hurt this team. Samuel took a hit, got the pass away. It's complete to Jefferson. Down the sidelines. Jefferson. Kyle Diggs finally brings him down at the 12-yard line. Oh, Vonnie Holiday really stuck it to, to him. They really stuck it to Chris Chandler. And I don't know how Chandler got that ball off. 24-yard pass play. And Chandler goes over the 300-yard mark for the first time this season and only the sixth time in his career. You know, you talk about tough quarterbacks. Rain starting to pour. It's going to start to come down pretty heavy right now. You start talking about tough quarterbacks, you got two of the toughest that ever played in the game right now. One doesn't get injured that much. One battles injuries all the time and keeps performing. Chandler throws end zone touchdown. Fitterin in for the injured Mathis. One thing Chandler said he he'd like to see more of Finneran. He likes the big target he presents. Finneran's a big guy. Finneran Finneran's 6'5", 220 pounds. Not many wide receivers in this league are 6'5". He can throw it high to him in the air. He can go up and get it. And he can throw it in front of him, and he can stretch out and get it. That's how he gets his separation. Chandler compared Finneran yesterday to the Giants' Jojo Vicious, another big receiver. James Feely for the point after. So the Falcons extend their lead following the personal foul, the dissension on the Packers' sidelines. And then Chandler hits Fitter in his second touchdown catch this season. You know that, that defense out there really struggled on that last drive, plus the altercation. I, I think really was a distraction and took away the emphasis on what was going on. Now, Mike Sherman has to settle down and get that all out of his head and call the plays. Barnes swings it out to Amon Green. Dives forward for the first down. You know, Mike Sherman, he just got into a great altercation with one of his players. He's probably replaying everything in his mind. Did he do the right thing? And then has all these responsibilities. Head coach, as you said, general manager. And now, you know, he finds himself trailing. And he's got to find a way to score points. And he's calling all the plays to Brett. That, that's got to be a tough thing. Now he's got to focus on, on exiting and owing these guys and what's going to work best. Four receivers set for the Packers on first down. Five nice pass play. broke it up. It's Ashley. Oh, and they threw a flag. Corey Bradford, the intended receiver. Now another flag. Pass interference against Ashley Ambrose and Kenny. It looks like from here, it's a pr pretty good play on the ball. Pass interference, number 33 defense. Hook the receiver. It's a first down. Let's watch his right hand. If his right hand's wrapped around his waist, and it is, that's a good call. 
So it gives the Packers a first down in Falcons territory on the Atlanta 49. And the Packers keep it on the ground with Green. He gains just one as we check in with James Brown in Los Angeles. Hey, Kenny and Bill, Philly continuing to plaster Dallas. Take a look at Ryan Leaf throwing his second pick of the day that's been returned for a touchdown. This one by William, William Hampton, 33 yards. Philadelphia has now scored 76 points against Dallas in two games. Back to Kenny Alvin, Bill Moss. All right, thanks, JB. So William Hampton, the Canadian Football League veteran, reaching the end zone today for the Eagles. Barb on second and ten. Pass to the outside is caught. Close to the first down marker by Corey Bradford. Conrad Hamilton made the tackle. That time there was a lot of room, a lot of green in between Ashley Ambrose. Corey Bradford, the Packers did pick up the first down with seven minutes to play. They trail by ten. Let Freeman get behind him. I don't know whether he was looking back to see if the blitz got there, but that's the number one rule, Kenny. You've got to stay with your receiver when the blitz is on. If the blitz gets there, you'll hear the crowd. Don't worry about it. He looked back. Freeman was by him. 56th touchdown pass from far to Freeman. As Warwell adds the point after. They surpass Montana to Rice. They surpass Marino to Duper. Now tied for fifth all time. Brett Favre to Antonio Freeman. And that was quick. Brett Favre's second touchdown pass of the day has pulled the Packers to within three. Six and a half remaining fourth quarter from Lambeau Field. Derek Vaughn. Vaughn out across the 30 to the 31. A 25-yard return. Kenny, look, they come with the blitz in here, so you have man coverage. Right there's Hamilton. Right there is Antonio Freeman. Hamilton's looking in the backfield right now and lets Freeman run right by him. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely cannot do that when you have man coverage. And Favre surpasses Joe Montana. Montana 273 touchdown passes in 15 NFL seasons. Favre now with 274 in just 11 seasons. And as we mentioned earlier, 56 to Freeman. Falcons with a three point lead. First and 10, 31 yard line. Chandler's pass is dropped. Tony Martin. Falcons have dropped at least three today, yeah, Bill. I was just going to say that to you, Kenny. There's been a lot of drop balls by Atlanta. You know, Atlanta, Atlanta's had a ton of opportunity. I mean, they're winning this game still by three points, but point-wise, they should have at least another 14. You know, the Falcons talk about the fact that they came in four and four, but they blew two fourth-quarter leads to San Francisco, lost both games in overtime. They had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter today. Could be thinking back to those 49ers games. Here comes Nate Wayne. He got him. Nice adjustment by the linebackers. 
when they go empty backfield, watch what happens, Kenny. This is honed in. Right here, they go empty backfield. Along with them comes this linebacker. He says, Nate Wayne, you blitz. Go. And he takes it, and nobody there is to pick him up. Nobody's there. If there's no back in the backfield, the middle backer went to the split outside wide with the, with the running back, and Nate Wayne just blitzed. Chandler on third and 19. Throws it back across the field. But Todd McBride was right there to wrap up Maurice Smith and force the punt. Boy, the, boy, the Packers clued in on this series. Alan Rawson waiting at his own 33-yard line. Good kick by Moore. Rawson, seven-yard return out to the 40. Good field position for the Packers following the 43-yard kick. Well, Fox tonight, Thanksgiving is here a couple of days early. Help yourself to a serving of brand new episodes of King of the Hill, The Simpsons, Malcolm in the Middle, and The X-Files starting tonight at 7.30, 6.30 Central, right here on Fox. The Atlanta Falcons, Kenny, on, on Rondell Mealy looks like he got banged up on that special teams coverage. But Atlanta Falcons offensively, they got away from their offensive balance. They passed three straight times down, backed up in their own territory. Now look at the field swing for Green Bay. Packers start from the 40, five to Green, breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle, loses three yards on the play bill, but he could have lost six. Well, that, that's some of the power, I think, that, that, that Brett Favre was talking to us about and, and Mike Flanagan was talking to us about, the center. Is that this guy, he's a strong guy. You know, he doesn't look it just because of his size. You know, he doesn't look very big, he, he doesn't look powerful, but he's a strong guy. Falcons have already blown a pair of fourth quarter leads to the 49ers this season. Four and a half to go. Second down and 12. Far to Freeman, but Keith Brooking was right there. A gain of four on the play. So it will be third and about seven for Brett Favre and the Packers. Both teams with three timeouts. The Packers sitting in good, good position right here with the field position. Third down. They, they can do pretty much anything they want to do here, Kenny, because they have the ability to punt and pin the Atlanta Falcons back down inside again, have another opportunity to get the ball. Five on third and six, looking downfield. And the pass is incomplete and hit the turf before Freeman could make the play. So Bidwell about to punt with 3.39 remaining. Darian Gordon, the NFC Special Teams Player of the Week, following his performance against the Cowboys last week. It's back deep for the Falcons. Got a couple of big returns in the fourth quarter. Let's see if he can do it here. He cannot. Horns Marshall. 47-yard punt, only five yards on the return. Well, in the last regular season meeting between the Packers and the Falcons, here's what happened. Brett Favre. On the next to last play of the game, the last football game at Milwaukee's County Stadium, trailing by three, Favre scrambled nine yards for the game-winning score with 14 seconds left. Packers won 21-17. Real history repeat itself today. Well, isn't, isn't today Milwaukee Day at the stadium? Yes. Well, they do that in three games a year, three home games a year. 
fans from Milwaukee get to use their tickets. And this is one of those games. Maurice Smith dives out to the 17 yard line, back to the original line of scrimmage. One thing Green Bay did a little bit different in the second half is they, they, they came with the blitz. And the reason they did is because the first half, I think they were kind of caught off guard by how much Atlanta came out and passed the ball. When they realized that passing was going to be either Forte here, they came back and made an adjustment at halftime to, to come with the blitz. Now, what they haven't been coming with is Darren Sharp because, because they need him back in, in the field of play as a free safety. So where they've been blitzing has been with the linebackers. We saw in that last crucial sack by Nate Wayne. They need Sharper because they lost Leroy Butler late in the first half to a broken left shoulder. His replacement, Chris Aikens, got it to that sideline altercation with Mike Sherman after committing a personal foul. So Dow Jew remains in the game. Second down at 11. Off the play fake. Chandler's pass is caught. Finneran near a first down. Finneran's second catch of the day. And Chris Chandler, Bill, for the first time in his 14-year career, has attempted 50 passes. He's also set a new career high with 29 completions. And I don't think you can expect to come into Green Bay and not pass the football because you know that they are going to get their points. We approach two and a half minutes to play. First and 10, 27 yard line. Falcons keep it on the ground with Smith. And he's knocked out of bounds by Darren Sharper after picking up yet another first down. He did everything right except he went out of bounds. Yes. Now, now that it stopped the clock and it's, that's, that actually plays in to Green Bay's game plan here. You know, that's that's a timeout, that the clock is stopped, and Green Bay doesn't have to use a timeout before the two-minute warning. And that's normally what you would have to do to force them to get a playoff before the two-minute warning. He did pick up a first down on the play, game 11. 2.27 to go. From the 39-yard line. And Smith again. Nate Wayne made the tackle after a short gain, and this time the Packers stopped the clock by calling their second timeout. Well, coming up following the Packers and the Falcons, the second half of our Fox doubleheader. Some of you will see Brian Urlacher of the Bears as they take on Warren Sapp and the Bucks. Others will see the Redskins and the Broncos or the Lions and the Cardinals. It's all coming up next on Fox. Take a look at that Bears defense. Those are the guys making a lot of big plays for them. Of course, they're getting all the credit and all the numbers and all the stats, but Keith Trailer and Ted Washington are doing a heck of a job up front as well. Clogging up the go. middle. And Mike Brown with the two interception returns for touchdowns in overtime to beat San Francisco and Cleveland in consecutive weeks. Packers down to one timeout remaining, plus the two-minute warning. 2.22 to go. Second down and nine. Smith, nowhere to go. And the Packers use their final timeout. Santana Dotson made the tackle. So the clock stops with 2.16 remaining. You know, the one guy we haven't seen a lot of today, and you know, you talk about Green Bay, you, you talk about Kabir Baja Biamia. Did I say that right? Kabir Baja Biamilla. Biamia. And 94. KGB. I'll that's stick a, with that. Dan, that's what Dan Reeves called him yesterday. He said, I can't pronounce his name. He's just number 94. But, but we haven't seen much of him. And, and the reason is, is that, you know, they haven't, they only want to bring him in on nickel situations, really, pass rush situations. And Green Bay thus far this year has done such a good job of stuffing teams and creating third and long that that's what you get into. But right now they don't want to put him into the game because Atlanta's doing such a good job of running the ball. And if he comes in there and they catch him out on the field, they will run right at him. 
There he is. Well, we have third and long, too. And they, and they wanted to see the personnel grouping that they were going to get into. See, now they have three wide receivers on the field. So it appears to be a pass, and they're not going to isolate and run at 94. Villamila. He's second in the league with 10 sacks. Third and nine. Here's Sharper. He got him. As soon as they went to that three wide receiver package, there's Fiamila. He's he's outside. Sharper's inside. And the back Bob Christian is picking up the linebacker, Nate Wayne, up the middle. So what you're doing is you're overloading the side. You're bringing up the middle, and you're bringing Sharper, and the back has to make a decision. Too many people for them to pick up. Two-minute warning time in Green Bay. Favre and the Packers look to stuff Morton and the Lions. It's a Fox NFL Thanksgiving special. Brett Favre's numbers. He hit Antonio Freeman for the game's most recent touchdown, which pulled the Packers to within three. And they will get the ball back. Chris Moore punting from his own 20-yard line to Allen Rawson. Awesome lets it bounce out of bounds. So with a minute 52 remaining, the Packers will start from their own 24-yard line. A heck of a punt by Moore. Well, next Sunday, Bill, R2-D2 is coming to Fox when he joins the Fox NFL Sunday pregame show. Then at 7, 6 Central, for the first time on television, Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. And following the premiere, don't miss the sneak peek at the StarWars.com documentary. R2-D2 beneath the dome. It's all coming next Sunday only on Fox. No timeouts remaining for the Packers. Penalty markers on first down. You know, I thought I saw Chapaqua up in the stands here a little bit earlier. <laughs> Was he wearing orange? No, yeah, he did have a little something on, but I'm not sure. He... Make sure he didn't want to get Ball shot. Start. The right guard, five-yard penalty remains. First down. Look at that. Tight ends, no catches today. David Martin and Bubba Franks have not caught anything today. Empty backfield on first and 15. Five fires to Schrader. First down out of the 37-yard line, a gain of 22. Clock continues to run. They're out of timeouts. And they've got to go hurry up all the way from here on in. Brett's going to have to work the sidelines a little bit to buy himself some time. He's got Schrader. Stop, Billy. Schrader comes back. Makes the catch in Falcons territory at the 45-yard line. Well, he came back that time. You see that? Remember, remember earlier in the game, Brett was waving him back. Brett was scrambling around. And that time, Billy Schrader stopped. Watch. Billy Schrader gets down here. Now, he's got a guy right there, so he says, I'm coming back. And he comes back to the ball, and Brett finds him. 18-yard pass play. Five, 20 career, fourth quarter, game-winning comebacks. Down to a minute 23. From the Falcons, 45. Barb steps up and throws. Incomplete. He was looking for Antonio Freeman. Brett needs to relax. He's going to get himself in trouble here. He's forcing. That's one of those forced balls that he throws every now and then, trying to put a lot of mustard on it. They're now he had Billy Schrader on the back side pretty wide open. He's got time. He needs to take his time and see what's out there. He's trying to force some things, and that's what's gotten him in trouble. He's got a lot of time. Ryan Longwell getting ready. Clark with time on second and ten. Airing it out. And that's what I'm talking about. His second pick of the 
the day. Yeah, that's exactly, Kenny. That's that's it. They only needed three points. You kick a field goal, you tie the game, you're at home, you're in overtime, you win. That, that, that's how you play it. Lambeau Field is silent. Brett and, Brett and Brady Smith exchanging words. Ashley Ambrose with his second interception of today's game as he won the jump ball from Bill Schrader. Packers with no timeouts. All right, Tommy, I got it. I tell you, please, you should have played for the field goal. You look, you look to drive, you look to score, but you take what the defense gives you. And he didn't do it. Favre turned the ball over four times today. Three picks and a fumble. All well, tremendous job by our entire crew, our producer, Mike Burks, director Rich Russo, the associate director Rich Dewey, our broadcast associate, Tom Yoey, the technical producer, David Graham, the studio show produced by Scott Apperson, directed by Bob Levy. The senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown. The executive producers, Ed Gorin and David Hill. Our statistician, Evan McGuire. And our spotter, Gary Lynn. Coming up, the Bears and the Buccaneers. Packers drop to 6-3. and three. Their nine-game home winning streak comes to an end. While the Falcons have won their third straight on the road, they are now five and four. They've already won more games than all of last season. And it's their first win here at Lambeau since 1981. You know, a couple things that jump out to me. One is that Atlanta is a very, very solid football team. Offensively, defensively, special teams. And when they play their game, obviously capable of beating anybody. The other thing is, is, is that Green Bay kind of seemed flat. Now, I, we talked about that short week they faced with two games in five days. But they kind of came out and said, you know, let's just get past this game and get ready for Thanksgiving. And even though they said that, they were good enough to still be in the game and good enough to have an opportunity to win the game here at the end, Kenny. And they just, they, they blew their opportunity. So it will be the Packers and Lions on Thanksgiving, while the Falcons will travel to Carolina next Sunday. Bears and Bucks coming up. Fox Sports thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. Stay tuned for the second game of your NFL doubleheader.